Exciting news! The Nintendo Switch successor is going to have backward compatibility with the original Switch titles. You know what that means. The Nintendo Switch has been around since 2017, and it's become one of my favorite consoles of all time. While it has some of the best games, one common criticism is the performance of these games. Be it subpar frame rates, low resolutions, or sudden performance drops seemingly out of nowhere. These complaints aren't completely unfounded, with the Switch successor announcing that it's going to be compatible with regular Switch games, let's talk about 8 JRPGs that could benefit from the extra power the Switch successor can offer. Today, we'll talk about 8 JRPGs, what performance issues they have, and how the Switch successor could alleviate these issues. Now keep in mind, this is all speculation as nothing has been confirmed for how powerful the Switch successor is going to be, or even if they're going to offer enhanced ports. And I'm by no means saying these are bad games. They're all good in their own right, they just suffer from a little bit of performance issues. Before we get started though, what JRPGs do you think could benefit from a performance or FPS boost? Let me know in the comments below, and let's get to talking about 8 JRPGs that deserve to get enhanced on the Switch successor. Bravely Default 2, released on February 26, 2021. Alright, first of all, I wasn't aware of how old this game actually is. It doesn't feel like it came out over three, almost four years ago. Boy, how time flies. The Bravely series is one of those series that is among my top favorites, and I had a spectacular time with Bravely Default 2. However, it suffered from a lot of frame drops. These frame drops usually occur when using fast forward mode in battle, or when a conversation starts, or even when accepting a quest. I especially hate that split second when the frames drop to single digits at the beginning of a conversation or accepting a quest. It puts me in a bit of a panic, and I always feel like the game is going to crash. It never does, but having grown up in the PS1 era, long loading times sometimes lead to crashing where parts where the game would just never load and be eternally stuck on a black screen. Now, Bravely Default 2 does have a PC port, and the PC port does run amazingly well. I would love if the Switch version could get an upgrade to this level, because honestly, the two versions of Bravely Default 2 are like night and day. Would you replay Bravely Default 2 if it got an enhanced port on the Switch 2? I know I certainly would. I love this game, even if it wasn't as amazing as the first two games in the series. Speaking of which, where's that Bravely collection, Square Enix? Haven't we waited long enough? The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, originally released for the Game Boy, received a remake on September 20th, 2019 for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I know that Zelda is not necessarily a JRPG, and it's more action-adventure or even puzzle-solving, but this is an argument as old as time itself. It has lots of crossover though, so let's just go with it, okay? Link's Awakening is one of the best Zelda games for me personally, up there with both Link to the Past and Wind Waker as my favorite Zelda game of all time. So when I heard that a remake was being made, I lost my mind. It had the perfect cartoony look and seemed to just be a visual upgrade. Everything you could want in a remake. So when I played it, it was my happy place. With that being said, it suffered from quite a bit of frame rate drops and the occasional choppiness. It's strange. The game normally runs at 60 FPS, but if the game drops even a little tiny bit below 60 FPS, it goes straight to 30. I have no idea why this happens, but if this could be alleviated and the game played at a solid 60 FPS with a better resolution, then I might go ahead and say it could be the perfect remake. Not to say the occasional frame drops ruins the game, like say Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Seriously, that game is almost unplayable, but it does affect the experience and dampen the enjoyment just a little bit. Still a great game, but it could be a little bit greater with that buttery smooth gameplay. Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince Released on December 1st, 2023 Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince is a monster collecting game based on the Dragon Quest franchise and it's a prequel to Dragon Quest 4 and it follows the villain of that game, Sorrow. Gameplay wise, The Dark Prince is brilliant and incredibly fun. With its turn-based system and being able to collect and fuse all different types of Dragon Quest beasts that you grew up fighting in all of the previous games in the series. 
Unfortunately, this game was too ambitious for the Switch. The performance is not only awful, it's terrible. Especially noticeable when running around on the map, it's constantly dropping and it makes the game really hard to enjoy for me personally. As much as I love Dragon Quest, it's one of my favorite series to ever exist. I couldn't stomach playing through this game with its performance. Thankfully, it did get a PC port earlier this year, and I played that version. That version of the game runs fantastic, but the Switch version could get an update to run like this on the new Nintendo console, I would be all for it. At least that would stop people from feeling like they have to double dip. Hails of Vesperia Definitive Edition is an enhanced version of the Xbox 360 RPG released on January 11, 2019. Tales of Vesperia is one of the Tales series' most highly rated games when it comes to fans of the JRPG genre. Unlike the other games on this list, Tales of Vesperia doesn't have terrible performance issues. Combat is fantastic, running at a solid 60 frames per second, but the issue is the world map. When you're running around the various environments of the game, it drops from a silky smooth 60 FPS to 30 FPS. Since the majority of the game is played on maps, this is just really clunky especially considering every other version of this game is 60 FPS all around. Like, this change isn't game-breaking, and it doesn't completely ruin it, but it doesn't feel as good as playing it elsewhere. I wouldn't be completely hurt if this game didn't get enhanced on the Switch 2, but considering this is as loved as it is, having it portable with performance like every other version of the game would be a dream come true. Sure, you can play it on Steam Deck if you want it portable, but that's an additional $500 or so, and that isn't exactly in everyone's budget. With that being said, play Tales of Vesperia. It has one of the coolest heroes that the Tales series has to offer, and while we're talking Tales, I'm actually reviewing every mainline Tales game in the series, so if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to check it out after you're done here and subscribe so you can follow my journey through the Tales series. Yeah, I know, it's not a JRPG, but it has the adventure of a JRPG, and Tears of the Kingdom has a story and exploration that puts most JRPGs to shame. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, released on May 12, 2023. Tears of the Kingdom was an absolutely stellar game, with a story that honestly made me tear up. See what I did there? <laughs> I'm sorry. The exploration was amazing, and the addition of underground and sky areas were so much fun to explore. I enjoyed the new mechanics such as Ultra Hand and how they were implemented, even if everything can be solved with bridges. Seriously, you can solve almost any puzzle in this game by building a bridge. I'm shocked that it didn't get Game of the Year last year. Nintendo deserved that. They were robbed, freaking robbed by Baldur's Gate 3. But anyways, Tears of the Kingdom, while an amazing game that anyone with a Nintendo Switch should play, it suffered from mad frame rate issues. First of all, it runs at 30 FPS, which, okay, it's Switch, I get that, it's standard for the most part, but once you get to using Ultra Hand and creating all sorts of things, the frame rate can absolutely tank depending on how complex it is. For the most part, the drops won't be so bad, but there were numerous times where it crashed my Switch and I had to hard reboot the console. This should be the prime game that gets enhanced on Nintendo's new console, because I'd say if you're going to buy a Switch for one game, Tears of the Kingdom should be that game. Again, I know it's not a JRPG per se, but I feel Zelda games are JRPG coded enough that they deserve a place on this channel. I also really want to review a Zelda game at some point. Do you have any suggestions? Which one should I do? Please let me know. Disgaea 6, Defines of Destiny, released on January 28th, 2021. Disgaea is Nisa's flagship strategy RPG series and is well known to its obsession with incredibly high numbers and over-the-top humor. Defines of Destiny is the sixth entry in the series and is just as wacky and ridiculous as the previous five games. However, Disgaea 6 on the Nintendo Switch... Well, it's awful. The game is still the same, but this version is full of terrible load times and terrible frame rate issues. This is one of those games where it's nearly unplayable. Due to the performance issues, nothing ruins the game more than a choppy frame rate or load times that completely take you out of the experience. While Disgaea 6 does have a performance mode and a graphics mode, neither of them runs acceptably. Performance mode is slightly better, but it still struggles to run at a smooth frame rate. While Disgaea 6 did get a PC and PS4 and 5 port, Disgaea is one of those games that is perfect to have portable with how grind heavy it is. Beef up that resolution and give it a solid 60 FPS and I would be incredibly happy. I'm sure the Switch successor could handle this and fix all the performance issues that plagued Disgaea 6. 
Ease 9 Monstrum Nox, released on July 6, 2021. So Ease 9 is another one of these multi-platform games that suffers from the Switch's lacking hardware. Now, Ease 9 in general didn't run the most amazingly on anything that isn't PC, but the game runs the worst on the Nintendo Switch. Not only does the game run at 30 FPS, the game suffers from some very bad frame drops. This is especially noticeable in the city and during the various raid sequences, where it isn't uncommon to see the frame rate drop as low as 10 to 15 FPS. For an action RPG that has a focus on time dodges and time guards, this is a serious issue, as it doesn't just impact the enjoyment, it actually makes the game fundamentally difficult to play. When you are unable to flash guard or flash dodge, it's almost like removing base mechanics, turning the game into something completely boring. Don't even get me started on the texture and object pop-ins that only occurs on the switchboard. It's quite unfortunate considering Ease is one of the best series of all time, and it's another game that excels being played portable. I know some people consider this one of the weaker Ease titles, but I still think it was a great game, especially for a long-time fan of the series. And if we could only get more acceptable performance, this would be a great game to have on the go. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, released on December 1st, 2017, is the second game in the incredibly popular Xenoblade franchise, obviously. Taking place in the fictional land of Allrest, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 follows the story of Rex, as he travels around the world with his sentient Blade of the Aegis, Pyrrha, and Mithra. Honestly, Xenoblade 2 is the best Xenoblade game I've played, granted I haven't played the third game or Torna at this time, however the issue with Xenoblade 2 isn't really the frame rate. The frame rate is fantastic and rarely drops. However, the reason the frame rate is so steady is due to the dynamic resolution. The resolution adjusts in order to maintain that steady frame rate. Unfortunately, this resolution can drop to something absolutely terrible, ranging from 378p to 540p in handheld mode and 504p to 720p in docked mode. You can definitely tell when it drops in high action scenes because it starts to look incredibly blurry. I can appreciate using a dynamic resolution to maintain a smooth experience. However, when it drops to a point where it's this noticeable, it presents a problem. With an enhanced version, being able to maintain a 720p or 1080p resolution could improve the experience tenfold and make it that much more enjoyable. I feel like most people probably don't notice things like resolution, but for those of us that are incredibly sensitive to things like this, it really affected the enjoyment of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So there you have it. The Switch, while having some amazing JRPGs and is one amazing JRPG machine, unfortunately suffers from some performance issues due to how long it's been around, but with backward compatibility, the Switch 2 could remedy these issues and give these great JRPGs a new life. Were there any JRPGs that I didn't mention that you feel deserve an enhancement? Let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video and want more JRPG lists and reviews, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ding that notification bell. Furthermore, if you want more Shinky JRPGs, be sure to check out this video that I feel will be right down your alley. This has been Shinky, thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day.